When many people think of a serial killer, names like Ted Bundy or Jeffrey Dahmer may come to mind. However, this isn't the only image a serial killer can have. Sometimes instead of these brutal maniacs, it's people from a quieter disposition who have more cruelty. Throughout history, no other victim's count is confirmed to be as long as Harold Shipman. Dr. Harold Frederick Shipman, to be exact. He has been known to kill several of his patients from his position as a general practitioner. This eventually earned him the title of Dr. Death. It's estimated that he's killed a minimum of 215 of his patients throughout his career, possibly up to 260. However, Harold wasn't always like this. On January 14, 1946, in Nottingham, England, Shipman was born, nicknamed Fred by those closest to him. As a child, he was the favorite son to his mother. However, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. Before she died, his mother had instilled upon him a mental state of superiority from other people, leaving him to be a loner in social settings. From watching his mother's treatments and actively overseeing the morphine, he got interested in medicine. The morphine treatments would be a harbinger of his choice of killing, as he mostly poisoned his victims with painkillers. She died by the time he was 17, and two years later he became a father, but he was still determined to become a doctor. He put forth a lot of effort and received his doctrine at a young age of 24. In 1970, it was estimated that his first kill was a few months after getting his license with a patient named Margaret Thompson, who was 67 years old and recovering from a stroke. By 1974, he had another child that same year that he joined his first practice. A year later, he was convicted of writing fraudulent prescriptions for himself for a painkiller named Pethidine. Once his crime of fraud was discovered, he was kicked out of his practice and forced to search for another place of work, along with attending rehab. A little over two years later, he joined another practice, the Donnybrook Medical Center, and committed all of his murders there. Shipman was a particularly smart man. With a high death rate of his patients, it would take a lot of work to keep under their wraps. Dr. Shipman would forge medical records to console the families of his victims to convince them that the deaths were to be expected. From this, he would tell the families no autopsy was needed and even convinced the vast majority to be cremated even if it was not in their final wishes. This eventually made it harder to place him as a responsible party for their deaths. Nobody, no evidence. The first person to raise concern about the high mortality rate of his patients was a local mortician. The bodies of his victims would be sitting up in similar positions, which was peculiar if the people died from different causes. The morticians stirred up a very poor investigation on the doctor, so much so that they didn't even run a background check, which should have been done unless people would have been murdered. The investigation closed and nothing was done until later on. It wasn't until the fateful day of June 24, 1998 that suspicions were to be raised against him. On this day, Kathleen Grundy would go to Dr. Shipman for a general checkup, only to be overdosed on morphine to die in her house three hours after him leaving her from a home visit. Kathleen's daughter, Angela Woodruff, was her mother's lawyer and found her death suspicious for many reasons. These reasons include that Kathleen's health was in good shape, but most of all, her estate was to be left to her doctor in a bizarre will found last minute. Since Angela already had her mother's will, this was incredibly outlandish. See, Miss Grundy was a very wealthy woman with a mansion. Angela brought her suspicions to the police along with evidence against him to convince them to get an investigation. The investigation revealed alterations in medical records of his victims post-mortem and decided to raid his house to find more incriminating things such as the drugs he used to kill the patients. Along with the drugs and a typewriter that he used to type Kathleen's will, there was jewelry he had stolen from his patients after he had drugged them. Harold had a good guise of a living father of four and caring doctor, so this blurs the records making it impossible to decipher when he first started his killing spree. Ultimately, Shipman was only tried for 15 counts of murder and one count of forgery, which was very gracious considering all the evidence against him. His lawyer was very good, which is what got the charges knocked down, along with the plea that he was being merciful from his patients' made-up terminal illnesses, which only went so far. Even though no one witnessed him killing his patients, his demeanor in court alone was enough for the jury to show a lack of mercy from his arrogant composure and ever-changing lies. Harold was found guilty on all 16 charges, sentenced to a life in prison and missing the death penalty. Even though he didn't get the death penalty, he died in prison on January 13, 2004 by hanging. It is not confirmed whether this was from suicide or if he was murdered.
Perhaps the scariest thought of all from the psychopath is that the people unknowingly went to this killer and it took so long for authorities to catch on to his wrongful practice. This case made people change regulations and freedoms that medical professionals have.